Next, fish fraud. One in five seafood samples mislabeled worldwide. Who would have thought there'd be fraud when it comes to fish? We all remember the horse meat scandal, but could the same kind of thing be happening to our fish products? Lovely, thank you. Oh, nice bit of sea bream. I think it's sea bream. But would we even notice if our haddock was hokey, or there was something bogus in our batter? I'm off to a fishmonger's in West London. Hi there, I'm Jim. Oh, hiya. To see if we know our cod from our coley. Got the cod. One of the nation's favourites. Nice bit of cod. So that's haddock. Yeah. That one's the coley fillet. They all look the same, but sell at very different prices. From premium Atlantic cod to bargain busting coley. So if I remove the labels, will the British public be able to tell the most popular whitefish apart? So what are you after? Uh, some nice white fish. OK, what, what's your favourite white fish? Pollock. Pollock, OK. That looks good to me. Are you sure it's Pollock? I don't know, you tell me. <laughs> Hello there, madam. Hello. Can I interest you in some white fish? What's that? I've got a clue. It just looks like a piece of white fish to me. There we go. That's cod. That's the haddock. That's haddock. <laughs> oh, gosh, OK. <laughs> Which one? I'm lost. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So there's huge potential for more expensive fish to be swapped out for a cheaper species, right along the supply chain. I'm off to meet a surveillance organisation in Oxfordshire who are leading the charge when it comes to tackling the problem at the source. Hi, I'm Jim. I'm Brad. Nice to meet you. Now, I'm here to find out about fraudulent fishing. Fantastic. Let me take you to the operations centre. Let's go. Bradley Soule and his team had the colossal task of monitoring the world's oceans for illegal fishing on behalf of global seafood industries and governments worldwide. So tell me, what are all these dots that we can see there? Cargo ships, pleasure yachts, fishing vessels, tankers. I mean, it truly is incredible, isn't it? You don't realize how busy the seas are. Every single dot on this live world map is a boat, and Bradley and his agents are watching them all. How bad? is fraudulent fishing. The upper estimate, they say up to 23.5 billion US dollars per year, possibly, uh, comes from illegal, unregulated, or unreported fishing. That's a huge amount, isn't it? So can we focus in on some suspicious behavior? Sure. Let me show you what's going on in the Pacific. She's really good this, I feel like a spy. So here we see two boats coming together. It's out in the middle of the ocean, so it's highly likely that there was some kind of exchange going on. Uh, they might have moved some catch on board, and that gets mixed in with the rest. So it's a type of laundering. You don't know where that fish has come from. You don't know Absolutely. where it's been caught, if it's in a protected area or not. Things get mixed together. A perfectly legal boat with an illegal boat. Well, whose catch was it? So there's lots of room for fraudulent behavior then? Absolutely. Any intelligence is passed on to the relevant government agencies to investigate. So this is a real powerful weapon against the illegal fishermen out there, the, the, the war on illegal fishing. Absolutely. But once the fish is landed, who's making sure there's no fishy business by the retailers and the restaurateurs? I've been given a location for a covert rendezvous to find out more. Hi, I'm Jim. Nice to meet you. Hey, hi, Jim. I'm Claire. Nice to meet you. Tell me a bit about your job. I'm a fish detective with Marine Stewardship Council. A fish detective? Yeah. That sounds amazing. Did you get a gun? So tell me what a fish detective does, then. But we look at traceability in the seafood industry. But we go out and we sample anywhere that fish is sold and make sure that the fish that you get on the plate that you want to eat is what it says it is and is where it's come from. So can I come with you? Oh, no, can't do that. Well, why not? I'll blow my cover. Otherwise, you'll end up getting taken out by the codfather. Oh. <laughs> Claire's gone off to land today's samples. It is so secret, we can't even film the shop she's going into. It's a bit like being a fishy spy. Right, we've got Claire. This is a battered haddock. It's quite hard to tell what you're getting because it's covered in butter, isn't it? So last year, when we sampled the, the non-MSC certified fish and chip shops, there was 17% of the fish and chips that we were given weren't what they said they were. So 17%? of the non-MSC certified fish and chip shops were selling fish that weren't the fish they said they were. Yeah, that's right. Wow. Two more undercover shopping trips. Sample number three. Then it's back to her mobile sample station. 
So once you've collected samples, what, what happens to them? Well, samples like this will go to one of 20 labs around the UK for DNA testing. I'd love to see how that works. I've come to one of these labs, location classified, to see this fish food testing in action. Hi there, I'm Jim. Hi, I'm Lucy Webster. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Now, I'm here to see how you analyse the fish DNA. Excellent. You're in the right place. Let's go. The samples Claire took earlier will take a couple of weeks to be analysed. But Lucy's got another batch to test with me. So what can the DNA analysis tell us then? What we do is we do species identification. So what type of fish has the sample come from? But you can also identify whether it might have come from the Atlantic or from near Iceland. Not only who the fish is, but where it's come from. Right, it's like CSI fish fingers, isn't it? Tiny bit of fish in there. Tiny bit of fish in there. An enzyme will then um, break down the cell walls yeah. and allow the DNA to be released. A couple of steps later... Right, so it's a shake and bake? Yeah. Perfect. And the DNA sequence is revealed. This is then compared to fish DNA held in their database to see if the species is a match. So this sample came back as Atlantic cod. So I see, so that above there, that's the sample of Atlantic cod and below is the comparison, and they do absolutely match up. So sample A, the supermarket cod, is Atlantic cod. Indeed. And the other three samples also netted a positive DNA match. I mean, I think the DNA testing is the final piece in the puzzle to really tell you whether what you've bought in the shop is what it should be. Thanks to the unflappable work of all these combined forces, UK cases of mislabeling have dropped to just 3.3% of all fish tested. What amazes me, when I go to the fish and chip shop and I order cod and chips, I'm totally unaware of all the work that's going on behind the scenes to make sure my cod is actually cod.